Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys, please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate that. But with that being said, let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So let's make sure everything is refreshed. Uh, so we are currently sitting around the same point that we have been for in the last week or so. We've been kind of just ranging on in these areas. Um, for the most part, you know, things aren't, you know, taking too much of an impulse in this market because we are still ranging with, of course, the dollar, uh, and the major indices. I'm not going to be talking about that too much in this video. Uh, probably save that for H bar. Um, but you know, overall, when we are talking about XRP and we're talking about this current market structure that we are in, we're almost in a recovery, you know, sort of plan, uh, where we are waiting for Bitcoin to kind of recover from these lows. We really want a nice impulse on Bitcoin before we do even get excited about any sort of altcoin movement. Uh, on the 24 hour spend, we have been seeing some altcoins kind of moving like Zcash, in my opinion, is kind of, a you know, an OG laggard asset. So we are seeing, you know, some you know, laggards kind of moving, uh, which by the way, the reason why I always talk about like Zcash, Bitcoin Cash and stuff like that is because these were like the last few to really kind of, you know, jump out. Like here is December of 2017, December 9th, by the way. Uh, and this is when it really started to move and it went to all time highs. So, you know, when we are talking about a lot of these, you know, OG uh, legacy assets, a lot of these are the ones that will move last, similar to even XRP. We already know that XRP likes to move last. Uh, it's just, that's basically how the market works. Uh, we know XRP, you know, popped around uh, December as well of 2017. Uh, and then it kind of ran into like December, I think it was, or January 6th, sorry, of 2018. So. You know, right now I am watching some of those OG laggard assets just to kind of see where the market structure actually really is and where a lot of the money flow is. Uh, I know that there's been a few altcoins like on the seven day spend that have been doing fairly well. Like for example, Waves was moving uh, quite a bit throughout the last, you know, like week or so. Um, but I just don't think that altcoins are ready just yet. I think that we still have a little bit of time left. Uh, so, you know, I'm keeping a close eye on, of course, those OG legacy assets, but I'm not going to, you know, watch my altcoin holdings too much. But with that being said, let's move on and let's talk about a few things. So first off, uh, shout out to Wrath of Kahneman. I'm hoping that I'm saying that right, but we do see here the Global Blockchain Business Council 2021 annual report talks about Zange tokenizing carbon credits on the XRP ledger with the United Nations. Now, this is no big surprise because the Zange logo is pretty much the UN logo anyways. Um, but we do see here Zange.com will develop a carbon credit solution on the XRP ledger for the issuance of tokenized carbon credits in accordance with standards set by the leading industry working groups like the Interwork Alliance, which we've discussed the Interwork Alliance quite a bit. Honestly, they are such a massive name in this space uh, and they have direct connections to a lot of the you know utility gems that I do talk about on a day to day basis, like, for example, even Hedera. Uh, but we do see our Global Blockchain Business Council initiative and the task force on scaling voluntary carbon markets, of which Zange.com is a member. Now, honestly, when we are talking about Zange with you know XRP, like this is actually going to be pretty big, uh, especially when you are talking about the XRP ledger. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize how massive carbon credits actually are, or carbon markets in general. Um, you know, we discuss this a lot with Hedera because we do know that you know Dovu is working with Hedera. Or sh I should say that they're basically built on Hedera to you know do a lot of carbon markets and carbon credits and stuff like that. <clears throat> and it's honestly a pretty big market and we do see, you know, man, it amazes me the information you find and share carbon credits are a huge value. And yes, this comes from this article as well. Um, I think that we've talked about this just slightly back in December. Um, but this is going to be pretty interesting to see be fully built out. Um, and of course they are talking about the sustainability of the XRP ledger itself, which is achieved through energy web token, which I talk about a lot on this channel as well. Uh, but Zange.com chose to build on the XRP ledger, given its performance, scalability and inherently green attributes. Uh, the XRP ledger was built with sustainability in mind and is one of the first major carbon neutral blockchains due to its federated consensus algorithm. The XRP ledger is significantly more energy efficient compared to proof of work blockchains and ensures low cost transactions. And honestly, I tell you guys to keep a close eye on sustainability because it truly is going to be a major selling point for a lot of enterprise and institutional grade use cases. So I love the fact that they are mentioning that about the XRP ledger. 
Now, also, again, shout out to Wrath of Kahneman here. Uh, Bank uh, Alfala mentions its partnership with Ripple in their 2021 annual report, noting its speed and security and importance in scaling up remittances. Bank Alfala uh, also recently partnered with Ripple partner Lulu Exchange in the UAE. And we do see, you know, as an industry first, the bank has integrated its remittance payment system with RippleNet, Ripple's global blockchain payments network, to offer a faster and more secure payment service to remittance customers. Through this integration, the bank will be able to scale its services and offer uh, market launches with newly onboarded RippleNet partners in a quicker way. You guys have to realize that it is all about, you know, quickness, speed, and, you know, how fast they could have these services to market. And we know with RippleNet, you know, a lot of these services do, you know, launch very, very fast. We've seen this even with, um, you know, I think it was Finostra, I'm pretty sure. It was Finostra or Tranglo. Uh, like the time to market was, you know, it was not slow at all. It was like, I think it was like two to three days or something like that. But you got to realize this is a full you know, network integration. Like imagine upgrading to the Swift network. I'm sure that it would take a lot longer than that. But, you know, I'm, I'm v definitely excited to watch a lot of these partnerships with Ripple kind of unfold into sort of a domino effect where we do see multiple banks kind of signing on to these services. And I'm just very excited to see a lot of this unfold. Now, before we get to the, uh, the major, you know, announcement of the Fed and stuff like that, um, I do want you guys to realize what some of these partnerships are really kind of doing with Ripple and XRP. This is, of course, coming from uh, people. Now, this video is pretty significant. So we do see here, Unleash the Opportunity. Whoa, CEO, um, Antti Arpanen. I'm hoping that I'm saying that name right. Uh, people, you know, talking Ripple and XRP being quite revolutionary. XRP is real-time liquidity, on-demand liquidity. So money isn't stuck. And listen closely to this. Uh, let me turn this up so that you guys can actually hear it. So let's play it. Um, what we do, for example, with uh, Ripple um, is, uh -huh. um, is uh, kind of we have two things that Ripple, we, that's our, one of the blockchain protocols we use for uh, cross-border transactions. So we have two things out of that arrangement. So we have um, global uh, technical connectivity to hundreds of financial institutions. Um, and the second part is this real-time liquidity, um, and we do it in XRP cryptocurrency, so it's country agnostic. And these two things allow us to do real, uh, kind of near real-time transactions at a very, very affordable uh, cost and without our money being stuck anywhere unnecessarily. And at the same time, we're connected to the whole world. Um, so that's kind of, it's, it's a practical implementation for us. We're, we're growing so fast right now that uh, some days we need to throttle our product a few times a day because there's just so much demand. Um, of course, this, this is a, this a good of, problem uh, to have. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice one, and, and then the solution is really simple. So the next uh, fresh funding coming, it will unleash this uh, opportunity, and the investors will immediately sort of uh, directly benefit from injecting a little bit of uh, fresh capital, and whoa, we can just grow. So we'll be in eight markets, but I'm not uh, going to name those markets now. All right. And this is basically what we want to see i mean this is one country agnostic as you guys do see key point um now definitely go check out crypto aries video on this as well because she really kind of breaks this down in a in an incredible way but when we are talking about real-time liquidity aka on-demand liquidity right like it's sourced through xrp you know saving these banks and these major companies 60 percent. i just talked about this in yesterday's video Honestly, this is such a massive innovation that I think a lot of individuals are kind of overlooking. Uh, you know, this is why we talk about some high price targets for XRP because right now, you know, everybody's kind of stuck in the idea that XRP hasn't hit an all time high in four years. But you got to realize what is actually being built behind the scenes with on demand liquidity. I don't think, you know, there's not enough. Um, you know, research uh, happening behind the scenes for XRP uh, that a lot of these individuals just don't realize how big of an innovation that actually is, especially not in just crypto, but also in the entire financial system. I mean, this is huge updates. Now, what I really want to talk to you guys about is this. So I've talked to you guys about Volante in the past. 
Notice that this only has two retweets, three likes, and one quoted you know, tweet. This is from Volante Technologies. Predictions on FedNow and the future of U.S. payments will be discussed by Dan Gonzalez from FRB Services and Volante's Melissa Jefferson Burns on March 8th. This is today, 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, now, I believe that this actually already you know, happened. Um, but when we are talking about this, you need to realize how big of a key, you know, Volante is. For one example, we go back to the Vol uh, the Volpe, sorry, Ripple processor module speeds integration to the Ripple global settlement network. Uh, this is simplifying that connection to Ripple's near time payment and settlement network. Uh, again, you know, this is really kind of just, you know, innovating directly into this massive new financial system for cross-border payments um, and just kind of, you know, getting into the settlement structure of Ripple. Uh, we do see, you know, the solution with easily uh, configured or configured, sorry, business rules within Volante's Volpay Ripple processor module. Payments can be processed via traditional correspondent banking channels such as Swift or alternatively may be routed automatically via Ripple Connect to the Ripple Distributed Settlement Network. Now, with all this in mind, we do see here the Ripple interface solution can be deployed in a variety of ways on a bank's existing enterprise service bus ESB architecture, uh, sitting between the bank's payment processor and external payment channels, integrated into a bank's existing payments uh, hub, providing a simple mechanism to initiate Ripple payments as a standalone payments pre-processor interfacing to the bank's payment hub. You got to realize that, you know, we're not trying to replace systems. We're trying to, you know, basically be you know, integrate it into what is already there, aka the legacy system, but innovate it to the point where it gets the same efficiencies that Ripple is really kind of offering to some of these major partnerships. This is why when you look at the processor module, we're not replacing anything. We're basically just another layer there to streamline the entire process through that settlement system. This will allow for a lot quicker, you know, settlement, a lot better FX rates, and also you know, you still you still see the scalability of the RippleNet um, overall efficiencies. Now, here's the benefits as you guys do see, you know, faster and lower risk integration to the Ripple payment and settlement network impact on existing payment applications minimized with Volante's pre-configured Ripple integration deployable in a range of environments interfacing with existing payment solutions and the Ripple network support for multiple payment formats used by your organization transformation to the Ripple payment format and management of payment flows via the Ripple Connect API. And this is very incredible. I mean, honestly, Ripple is such a massive key player here uh, because we've been seeing a lot of connections with, for example, the Federal Reserve. I actually mentioned this article, um, you know, before this goes back to February 3rd, 2021. So this has been in, you know, the works for a while. Uh, but we do see Federal Reserve Payments Pilot incorporates Ripple partner Volante Technologies. Now, this is for the Fed now payments. Uh, you know, Ripple partner Volante Technologies becomes the latest fintech company to join the Federal Reserve's new instant payments uh, pilot scheme. Uh, the service will help provide American consumers and businesses with instant payment services. Uh, this comes as Ripple Labs nears its first checkpoint in the battle with the SEC. And of course, yes, this was February of 2021. So, you know, during this time, you know, the, the overall uh, SEC lawsuit was very new, um, but we do see here the pilot will include over 110 organizations from the Fed uh, Reserve's FedNow community to support the development, testing, and adoption of the service. Now, I know that this is not a clear cut and confirmation that, you know, Volante with Ripple will be chosen, um, but I want you to all realize that, you know, these are piloted systems. We go back in time a little bit to when, you know, banks were piloting Ripple technology, you know, the top 38 out of the top 100 banks were already piloting and utilizing Ripple technology. And most of those partnerships that they already had in place for piloted systems turned into, you know, strong partnerships that were utilizing Ripple technology on a day-to-day -day uh, basis. And again, when we are looking at this, you know, we do see proud to leading the way in implementing the Federal Reserve upcoming instant payment offering FedNow service as a pilot participant. And I'm just telling you right now, they are not getting instant payments without Ripple. I'm telling you right now, when we are talking about this, this is the direct connection in terms of these partnerships. And I'm telling you, a lot of things are in the works right now, especially from the FedNow service itself. Uh, we do see the FedNow service is a new instant payment service that the Federal Reserve Banks are developing to enable financial institutions of every size and in every community across the U.S. to provide safe, efficient, instant payment services in real time around the clock every day of the year. And I want you to all realize exactly what they are saying here. Real-time instant payments. 
these are those services that we've talked about. You got to, you know, pay attention to the things that they are discussing here and the keywords that they are mentioning because all of this leads me back to distributed ledger technology, aka RippleNet with XRP. This is huge. And things are, you know, happening rapidly, especially in terms of the ISO 222 uh, messaging format. Um, but you do see some of the features here. I mean, you're looking at 24 7, 365 operations. And uh, here's that payment, you know, the FedNow service in terms of, you know, that instant flow. Uh, does this look familiar to anybody else? Because to me, this looks just like the schematic for the, the RippleNet uh, on demand liquidity service. Now, with all this in mind, are we going to 100% say Ripple's involved here? No, absolutely not. But I'm just telling you right now, with all of the buzz keywords that they are mentioning here and with what they are trying to, you know, really kind of achieve, I would say they would need something like Ripple. They would need some sort of DLT technology. And this is where, you know, a lot of the talks, you know, comes into place where, you know, who are they going to choose for this? Is it going to be Hedera? Is it going to be Ripple? We don't know, but this is exactly why I diversify my holdings. Uh, but I will say this, as Ripple is nearing a settlement with the SEC or maybe even possibly a blatant win, uh, you know, a lot of things are going to start to unfold, especially even with regulations talks, uh, ISO 222, all of this goes hand in hand with you know, mass adoption of crypto technology to really innovate further, uh, you know, our financial infrastructure. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free discord down in the description below. As always up to you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out guys.